Hey guys! Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine from 1999 was the first 3D installment in the series and puts Indy against the Soviets right before the events of the movie Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So, was it any good? Let's find out. Inside this box with, by the way, a simple but superb illustration of Indy's magnificence, we've got a jewel case containing the two CDs for its massive 800 megabytes of data for the full install of the game, and as well its full color manual with the beautiful art of Drew Struzan, the guy responsible for the Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Back to the Future, Harry Potter movie posters and also some of Alice Cooper's cover albums. In my honest opinion, Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine is a huge overlooked gem. Back in 1999, in a time where point-and-click adventure games have already died out its flame, LucasArts released the first 3D action adventure game based in Indies adventures. I remember that I was extremely anxious and really looking forward to grab this game at my first opportunity, and so I did. Ok, you all know that I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan and that this game is kind of a poor Tomb Raider clone. But you have to agree that this is one hell of a good venture into the 3D action adventure game genre. Many people talks about how awkward the controls were, but I remember that this was also a problem in many 3D games of the time, Tomb Raider included. Time to go to work. The real facts are that Infernal Machine has an awesome and interesting story, capable of truly fantastic and memorable scenes and successfully captures the essence of Indiana Jones movies. Remember Sophia Apgood? Well, probably not like this. You'll most likely recognize her in this photo. Well, she's back and she's with the CIA now. Project leader Al Barwood, also responsible for Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis point-and-click adventure game, originally planned this new indie title to have a plot based in UFOs and extraterrestrials. But this idea was vetoed by George Lucas because, at that time, he was already thinking of a similar story for a fourth Indiana Jones movie later subtitled, as everyone knows, The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and only released 9 years later in 2008. Infernal Machine's story is set in 1947, after the end of World War II where Indy was involved. While in his dig site in the canyon lands, Indy is approached by Sophia, who tells him that the Soviets are excavating the ruins of Babylon. They are searching for a weapon more powerful than the atomic bomb that would give them an advantage in the Cold War that had already begun. Then, Indy is hired by Sophia to investigate firsthand, taking us on a fabulous journey around the world through 16 levels, from Kazakhstan to the Philippines, Mexico, Sudan and many others. Basically, in each level we're required to kill enemies, jump or climb from platform to platform and search for the exit to advance to the next level. It's that simple. But its execution is amazing and each area feels unique and true to the Indiana Jones movies. Graphics for today's standards can look really poor, but back in the day they were beautifully designed. The exterior may seem a bit artificial, but indoors the level of detail is amazing. Also, in my opinion, Indy actually resembles Harrison Ford and its voice acting is superb and faithful to the man in the hat who has got really smooth movement animations as well. Level design is also magnificent and really can take us on this great quest. There are plenty of different situations and you won't be easily bored. 
Needless to say that the musical score by Clint Bajakian is great and based on the original Riders March from Riders of the Lost Ark soundtrack by John Williams. As for the sound effects, it helps to add a lot more atmosphere to this great game. The crisp and clean voice-overs of the Soviet characters and weapon effects were really impressive at the time. A Nintendo 64 improved version was available in North America and never released in Europe due to continuous delays. For the record, it was on development for too long, about 19 months, and was only released a year after the PC version had hit the shelves. It also featured some new sequenced musical pieces by my all-time favorite composer, Chris Ulsbeck. The game's variety of puzzles received good reviews by the press and the inclusion of a hint system and the film quality-like cutscenes were even applauded. The controls, on the other hand, were a bit infuriating and stressful for many players. But what's the rush? With such a good story and beautiful landscapes to explore, this game is to be taken slow, trying to enjoy every bit of it. Cause there's even easter eggs to find. Where am I? On map territory for sure. After playing this game, I felt the urgent need to watch all indie movies all over again. Whoops. I need something to hold this pressure pad down. Hope you enjoyed the review of one of my big addictions of 1999. Have you already subscribed to my channel? What are you waiting for? I make a new video every single week. So, thanks for subscribing and thank you very much for watching. See you all next week.